No, let me remember. Eric, Eric Wilson's going to talk about his camp experiences for tonight at 6 o'clock. So all the young people come and they can listen and be see what really goes on there. And then uh, Parker Tibbetts in Sperry is being uh, ordained today. And then one other thing, we're going to ask Jack to give a special prayer for those in Afghanistan. Our kind and all righteous Heavenly Father, we do humbly come before thee this morning recognizing that thou art the great creator, that you made each of us, and that you have created this world, given us a place to live, and made us stewards over those things we possess. And for Father, we come this morning because our hearts are somewhat grieved because of the things going on in this world, particularly the people in Afghanistan, the Taliban are vicious people, and they're people who need to get to the airport to be able to be ex extracted from that, that horrible place at this time. And so, Lord, we know that nothing is impossible for you. We just pray that you might have mercy on the situation there and, and allow the, the Taliban to allow safe passage of uh, all the American citizens and our allies who have assisted us in this 20-year war. We pray that you might have mercy upon them and allow them to depart. And yet, Father, once they've departed from that land, they will need places to live and to work. And we pray that you might have mercy and help them to establish themselves anew in some location that uh, they may be, come to one day, Father, that they may be able to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that they will move into an area where Christ will be taught and they will recognize that he is the only way, the Lord and the King of all. And so, Father, we come to position at this time on behalf of this world situation and pray all things in the worthy name of Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Katrina. That was beautiful. Uh, on the piano today, we have Linda Gusman. The invocation will be Bruce Terry. The uh, benediction will be Pete Patentler, and uh, Ron Thompson will bring the message. It's a beautiful day today. The Lord has blessed us with a beautiful day, and I pray that each one of you come seeking the word of the Lord and that you might Find those things that you need to hear in your life. And I know with Ron preaching, we're going to all be uplifted. The call to worship comes out of the uh, Doctrine and Covenant 162, paragraph 5. Remember, remember, my remnant saints, you are of the chosen few to bring to pass the kingdom here on the last days. Whom much is given, much is required. Throughout the revel uh, revelatory direction given to the remnant church from the prophetic office is which is required to bring to pass Zion. Therefore, my coming, read, study, and obey. Thank you. We'll stand and sing 101.
God, the eternal Father, in the precious name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, we have come into your house this day, a house that is full of peace and comfort, where we can lay the cares of the world at the front door and come in and be filled. I ask this morning that you might come unto us, for I have already felt your presence with the opening ministry of music. I ask this morning that you would be with our brother Ron, your servant, that you might open his mouth and give unto him those things that you had laid upon his heart, and that we as a people would receive them into our heart and apply them to our life. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much. And pray that your spirit would continue to move and surround us and abide with us. And I humbly ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray, Almighty God. We come before you at this time to uh, take the offerings to, and ask you that you might bless them that give and those that would like to give if they could, Lord, and bless this money. And we know that everything we have comes from you, Lord. And we ask these things in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Roger, you said this is a beautiful day. It absolutely is. You remember what David said? This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Taken from Psalms. What a writer. What a man who turned his life around because God helped him turn it around. He had a task to fulfill and was able to to do that through the scriptures. Our scripture lesson today is taken from the third chapter of Colossians, beginning with the 16th or 15th verse. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And the 17th verse, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word and to this service. Katrina and Linda, thank you so much. In the ministry of music, the Lord comes in on that wave of music and touches all of us. That's a big part of the service. I hope I can just do it justice today as God gave me some information to bring today. And I say that in all humility because when I heard that well, I actually selected myself to be here today. It's been April since I preached, and I thought, 
there's something that God wants me to say today. So I'm not going to turn him down. And I want to tell you folks, I have never brought a newspaper in when I've had a sermon. But I did today. Because what I'm going to read to you is going to open your mind to see how God works in everybody. Not just us here in this church, the remnant church of Jesus Christ, but everybody that allows his spirit to be with them. The calling of this work is a blessing, the headline. And I just, we take the examiner, and I, this was last week's paper, and so it was an answer to me what I should bring as I read this to you, listen very carefully, because it concerns all of us. When Lee Summit North Jr. Caden Green, that's Lee Summit North, for those of you who live in Lee Summit know about this, maybe, he was lying, he's eight years old, he was lying on the couch in his home watching the NFL Network with his mother, Dana. And she says, we're watching football because even back then, I just had a feeling that football was going to be an important part of our family lives, said Dana, the mother, whose uh, intuition was spot on that day. Caden looked up at me and he said, Mom, I think playing football is what God called me to do. That way, I can bring people to him, eight years old. And I'm, you, all these young people that are here today, I don't know if you want to play football or not, but I know God has touched your life because a lot of you have already been up here at the 915 hour to express yourself to the Wilson family and the other families that have been here. And uh, I thank you for that. Caden looked up at me and said, Mom, I think playing football is what God called me to do. And this is a fast forward now, eight years Later, get this now, he was a little guy. Green is now six foot five. He weighs 310 pounds. And if there's a five star camp or all, uh, if, if there is a five star camp or all star celebration, you can bet he's been invited. 20 different schools. He's only 16. He's a junior at least Summit. And 20 schools, colleges are already asked, knocking on the door asking for him to come and visit. That means a free scholarship. He is currently ranked as a number 37th overall in the national class of 2023 and is listed as a four-star offensive tackle by Rivals.com. Green has received 21 Division I offers including area schools, Missouri, Canada, I'm not going to go through that, and he still has two more seasons to play at Lee Summit North. Now our topic today are, is blessed are the peacemakers, and that's the reason I'm bringing this to you, and I'm going to continue on. I put the rest of it to, to a pen and paper. He is humble and confident that he is a rare combination. This is a rare combination for a 16-year-old who gets as much attention as Caden Green, said his coach. He is a wonderful, God-loving young man, and I credit his parents, Dana and Reggie, for that. Think about how you're raising your children right now. That's the reason I brought this, because here he was eight years old, and eight years later, he grew up to be a giant, six foot five, 310 pounds. Everybody likes it football. College is like a big guy to stay on the front line so nobody can get through. He, and he's one of them. And I credit his parents, Dana and Reggie, for that. They have raised him the right way, and he is one of those players I look forward to seeing every day. Caden is going to have a lot of decisions to make in the near future, said his father, Reggie Green. And we know Coach Mosey will be our family, all in our family, all the way. Throughout this process, Green's father paused for a moment and added with a touch of sincerity and awe in his voice, look, he said, I'm six foot, my wife is five foot eight, and we have a six foot five inch son who weighs 310 pounds and is a great young man and a great football player. This is a God thing, he said. 
That's the only explanation I have. The way he embraces his love of God and his family is very special to all of us. Caden is quick to agree with his father. This is a 16-year-old with a very mature mind for his age. My life is a blessing, Caden said. My family, my relationship with God, being a part of Lee Summit North High School and being coached by Coach Mosey. It's just a blessing. And I know that one day I'm going to make a decision on where I go to school and how that can impact my life. But right now, the only thing I'm concentrating on is our football team and how we can improve every day and have a great season. I just put my faith in God and we got through this season, although we were not as successful, Green said, because of the COVID factor. And it's true for a lot of these schools. Everyone is serious, everyone is working hard, and everyone is focused, rain or shine, I thank God for all my blessings. What an article. It inspired me for the rest of what I'm going to say today. And the Lord is blessing him. And blessed, as I said a moment ago, are the peacemakers. And that's why we're here. We are supposed to be peacemakers. That's part of the Lord's Sermon on the Mount. And uh, that was my choice to speak today to. What does a holy, righteous, pure, and perfect character of God look like as it's being developed in a person like Caden? Each one of us, no matter what age, God is inspiring us to understand his word and how much he loves us. How many times have we sat here and let what was saying go right over the tops of our head? And we leave and say, well, we've been to church today. That is the point with God. He's asking us to assimilate and absorb what we're learning together, to be understanding of the scriptures that he's put before us, and to live them. We're all subject to being human. That is a cop-out, but it's true. None of us are perfect. We're all here to learn more about how we should live our life. And God inspired Apostle Paul to list key virtues of God's character in Galatians 5, 22, 23. And I want to read that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And I believe, Brother Mike, you had that in your sermon last week. Uh, that is a thing that we all should be a mindful of God's Spirit telling us how we should be. Those factors mean a lot in the grace that God has given us to be saved. The call goes out to each of you, each of you, to be aware of the devotional service that we had this morning at 915. Each Sunday in this very place at 915, we ask uh, Brother Mo and his wife, Lois, if they would like to handle the 915 service. They actually volunteered to do it. And so what he's done is pick people like you here in the congregation to come in for that 15 minutes and bring your testimony. And it's, so, it's been so great. The problem is it's only 15 minutes, and, the, and when you think about the Baker family, the Wilson family, and many of you have brought ministry to all of us already. What a great way to start today. There's only one basic problem. You're not here. Not enough of you come here at 915. Now, why don't you just get up about 15 minutes earlier, and you won't have a problem. I found that out when I've cut, the clock, cut my time trying to get here on time and come in about 20 after and miss out on part of that. Uh, B and I have changed our way of life. We're getting up earlier. And you know what? We feel better by doing it. Those young people that have participated chose to witness to all of you during this short service, showing their love for God, for the Lord, and for their family. It's good when we see families come together, which out there in the world today is lacking. There's so many kids on the street, kids living with their grandparents, Kids in trouble, selling drugs on the street. All this is going on 
Where does God want them? He would like to have them right here. But it's the family life that they're living in that's caused a problem. You adults, there is no limit on age. Show the Lord you care and be a part of this special 915 ministry every Sunday, and you will be blessed if you do. We don't spend enough time in here, folks. Let's face it. As long as this beautiful church is here, we need to utilize it and come together and grow in the spirit that God wants us to grow in. When we talk about peace, blessed are the peacemakers. I think of a joyful people. Some people tend to think that joy is not really important, especially if they compare it with just having fun or only a nice experience that soon passes. And I say that real joy is far beyond that. As a matter of fact, God wants real joy to be one of our high priority goals. We're supposed to be a happy people. We sing a song, 508. Uh, let's be a happy, happy people in the Lord. And that's one of my favorite ones. The Lord commands his people to rejoice, means to think joy and express joy. Only we understand God's truth. We should feel a sense of my cup runneth over. God expresses that to us in the scriptures as we uh, utilize our time and as we recognize when we get up in the morning and praise him and give him opportunity to direct our lives, our cups do run over with gratitude for all that God has done for us and will continue to do for us as we look to him. A joyful person uplifts those around him or her and makes the world a better place. Therefore, expressing ourselves cheerfully, which for us, a remnant church of Jesus Christ people, not only should we feel this, but then we recognize God's love and blessing as a happy people. All the fruits of the Spirit are important ingredients to bring the light of the world. And that's in Matthew, 5th chapter, 14th to the 16th verses. For ye shall have great joy and be exceeding glad, for great shall be your reward in heaven. For so persecuted that the prophets which were before you, verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose its savor, wherefore shall the earth be salted? The salt shall be henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Verily, very, I say unto you, I give you to be the light of the world. He's talking to us, folks. Wasn't just talking then. He's talking down through the ages, all of us. A city that sits on a hill cannot be hid. And that is true. We had a former president use that scripture when he thought about the Lord in his speech. And that's one of the things that he felt in his life. There's going to be a city on a hill, and the light will not be hidden. People are much, are much more likely to have a good impression of our religious beliefs if they see in us joy and happiness and other virtues in our character and our personalities. We need to have a positive outlook on all that we do. God does not want to dwell with negative people. He's trying to bring those that are negative out of that mode and become positive in all that is said, being positive and uplifted by his spirit. And that's joy and happiness. I'm talking a lot about that as well as being a peacemaker. We got a long ways to go, folks. We talk about Zion, we got a ways to go because we got to look at ourselves. As uh, the saying goes, I looked in the mirror to find the, uh, looking for the enemy, looked in the mirror, and I found that it was me. I need to overcome those things in my life that will draw me closer to our Heavenly Father. That's what he wants us to do. 
He wants us to depend on him, not on ourselves, saying that we can do all things. No, not with the, not that. That's what the satanic force would have us believe, that we can do everything out here in the world and we'll be saved. No, it doesn't work that way. God wants us here to change our lives, a completely change life. And I'm thinking of one right now is Paul, who was Saul. He was an evil man in the beginning. He was going around uh, taking the Christians out of their homes, chastising them, arresting them. And then God spoke to him on the way to Damascus. And what did he say? Paul, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And so God sent him to be administered to. And that's what we have in the church today, administration. And through that administration, Saul became Paul because the Romans, he had to have that name. The Jewish people would be looking for him to kill him. But Paul went out and became one of the greatest preachers of all times. An evil man turned his life around, and that's with us. I think about some of the things I did years ago, and I shudder. But I know God has forgiven me and given me an opportunity to be here today and to testify that Jesus is the Christ and we are to depend upon him and no one else if we want to be in the glory that he has for us. That's why we need to be positive, not negative in our relationship with each other. I'm not just saying that. Jesus said that through his prophets throughout all the ages, including the present time, which is why we should not grow weary, which warns us to prepare our minds in overcoming what? Overcoming ourselves. That's our problem. God placed us here on the earth for that very reason, to learn to overcome and to be part of his, what? Heavenly body. He's already said he's going to come, and he's going to come with his Zion and his people, and there will be a thousand years. I'd like to live in that thousand-year reign. I think it'd be a, a beautiful thing. In fact, I want to try to live my life in a way that maybe I'll be acceptable. Think about that, folks. Life here on earth, we're living in a worldly time. Look at the chaos that's going on throughout the world. In the, on the globe, completely around the globe. When is Christ coming? He says he's going to come as a thief in the night. When will that be? We don't know. Not even the angels in heaven know that. So that's something we want to think about. How are we living when he comes? There are those out there now in the world, and we know what that's like. We've been out there that think what they're doing is just a great and wonderful thing, whether they're on drugs or whether they're drinking or whatever their habits are. Uh, many, many people blame God when they've come down with a sickness. Why did God do this to me? It isn't God that did it. We did it to ourselves in most cases, and sometimes an exception that some things are inherited, and uh, that cannot be helped. But it's a trial and a challenge for us if we have a trial in our life to overcome. Again, to remember that God gave us this life here in this dispensation. Aren't you glad we're living in this dispensation? This time of all times? I've heard people say, I like the old times. I haven't, haven't heard that lately. We're living the best of times right now. And we need to remember that what God has done for us while we're sitting here in this beautiful sanctuary and knowing that God allowed us to be here. And all we had to do is put out the effort. We didn't have to come in a horse and a buggy. We didn't have to walk. We didn't have to take a bus. We have a wonderful automotive uh, to bring us here, uh, to, to come and bring us here and to realize that he's given us all these things freely. He's allowed us to have these things. In 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 33rd verse, it says to us, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. 
Think about that. Proverbs says, 12th chapter, 26th verse, the righteous should choose their friends carefully for the way of the wicked leads them astray. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch that which is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians 6, chapter 16 through the 18th verse. If we are continuously faced with choices, we often must choose between exposing ourselves to bad influences, which is happening right now among those out, uh, even in, maybe in our family, we can't control, but praying that they will change. And we see people, our neighbors, we got good neighbors, wonderful neighbors where we live, but there's some things that we'd like to see them change that we can draw closer together. The closer together, means that we are on the same page in how we live and what we do. Surrounding ourselves with, with good influences, including other believers. God is very displeased when we choose evil or what will lead us towards evil. The mind is like a sponge that will soak up whatever we expose to it. We've probably heard that before, and it's true, whether it's good or bad. Our brain takes that information in, and what goes in stays in to a great extent. A computer is a good comparison. Computer's output depends upon what was entered into the system. Garbage in, garbage out. I don't see... Brother Ammon, is Brother Ammon here? When I was going to him as a doctor, uh, I was trying to figure out a way to lose a little bit of weight. And he said, Ron, calories in, calories out. Pretty simple. When I saw this garbage in, garbage out, I thought of him. <laughs> what we take in and what we put out. Same way with our brain. We've got to get rid of those bad things because we know as we turn our lives around, God is already, what? He's forgiven us of those things in the past. He says, don't look at the past. Look at the future and look at what your life wants to be. You want to be with him? Then don't pay attention to all this stuff that they're saying on TV to bring you into a different situation that takes you away from the Lord. Do not allow experiences and thoughts so it will be ashamed of when we face him. I want to keep my thoughts clean and clear. One time I was in uh, Home Depot, and I was going to buy a product, and this fellow came up to me, and he says, hey, i got to tell you this joke. I said, oh, wait, just a minute. Uh, is it clean? Well, no. I said, I I'm sorry, brother, but I said, I don't want to hear it. I said, I got enough garbage up here in my brain. I don't need any more. Oh, he says, okay. So I didn't offend him, but he knew what I meant. I didn't want to hear that wasted talk and something that would be uh, thought after that I didn't want up there to think about. Daily prayer is a key in our relationship with God, and a major part of our prayer should be thanking and praising God for his many blessings. I'm talking to the choir, I'm sure. Most of you do that. We're all striving to do what God wants us to do. Most of you do this, and when we totally commit to him, Psalms 144.15 states, Happy is that people whose God is what? Is the Lord. James 5.11 says, We count them happy that endure. 
John 13, 17. If you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. All are called, but you, you I have to get it out of my mouth. All are called, but few are chosen. And yet the Lord tells us, you have not chosen me. I have chosen each one of you. And that's the reason we're here. We've been pricked in our hearts to know this is where we belong. This is our spiritual home here on earth. To work together, to share together, to sing together, pray together, eat together. All of us in this sanctuary have been born in these latter days and are taught to seek the living God. Now I want to say this in closing because Tom Beal, I don't know if you knew him or not, high priest in the church. When we were going to Blue Springs, he taught uh, priesthood classes. And he said, brethren, when you get behind this pulpit, if you talk more than 25 minutes, you shouldn't be up here. I've talked over 25 minutes. And I realize what he's saying because he says, the brain can only absorb so much of what I've said here today. It's human. The brain can only absorb so much. And he says, 20 minutes, and he said, people are thinking about what's in the oven, uh, where are we going to eat today, you know, those kinds of things. So he says, try not to do that. Try not to go over 25 minutes, he said, even though 20, he says, you're losing them. I hope I haven't lost you because God is good, and I know he wants all of us to do these things that I've just talked about. He got up to speak one uh, Sunday, sh shortly after that uh, teaching lesson for the priesthood, and it was so good. And I, yeah, I can't remember what all he said, but I do know this. He looked up the clock, and he was right in the middle of a statement. He said, I'm going to finish this statement, and I'm going to sit down. It's 25 minutes, and I'm up. <laughs> so <laughs> here we are, folks. May God's Spirit continue in us motivating us to seek God and to do good, and joy will abound in our hearts. Let's praise God. Amen.
Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to share in the spirit of worship with the fellowship of the saints as we each one strive to live up to that wonderful calling that you've given us as saints of God. I pray that the Lord may bless and keep one of you to fulfill the calling that he has given to you to seek first the kingdom of God and to establish his righteousness in all that they do. In Jesus' name, amen.